Hi, I'm Ellen from The Chili Dog and today I'm going to teach you how to knit a gusset heel for toe-up socks like I did here for my free climber socks. When a gusset heel is worked from the toe up, it's often called a flegal heel. This style of heel is worked in two parts. The first part is the gusset and the gusset is worked in rounds. You increase one stitch on each side of the sock every other round while continuing in your pattern across the instep of the sock. The second part is the turn heel, which begins at the center of the sock on the bottom of the foot. And the turn heel is worked back and forth in short rows. This creates this triangular section at the back of the heel. You'll notice that the gusset or flegal heel does not have any sort of rectangular heel flap. Let's get started. If you're following a toe up sock pattern that uses a gusset or flegal heel, it should tell you exactly where in your knitting you need to begin shaping the gusset of your sock. And you can likely skip ahead to the next part of the video where we start knitting. If you're not following a pattern, you can easily figure out where this gusset shaping needs to begin. But you need to know a couple of key pieces of information. The first thing you're going to need to know is the finished sock foot length. And you're also going to need to know your round gauge. So for my example sock that I'm knitting here, I want the finished foot length of the sock to be nine and a half inches. And I know that the round gauge of my knitting is 44 rounds over four inches. Gusset increases happen every other round until you have doubled the number of heel stitches minus two stitches. So for example, if your sock is 64 stitches around, half of those stitches or 32 stitches are going to be for the instep and the heel is going to begin being worked across the other 32 stitches. As you're shaping the gusset, you're going to need to add 32 minus two stitches, which gives you 30 stitches. Since you're increasing two stitches every other round, that means that your shaping is going to happen over the same number of rounds as the number of stitches you're gonna increase. So my gusset shaping would be happening over 30 rounds. Now we're gonna to need to do some simple math. To calculate how long that gusset is going to be, and let me show you here what I mean. The gusset length would just be how long this section of the sock is going to be. All you need to do is the gusset length is going to equal the number of gusset rounds that you just figured out here divided by your round gauge. So in my case, that's going to be 30 rounds divided by 44 rounds per four inches. And I got out my calculator and did the math and that comes out to be about two and three quarters inches. Now, just a little bit more easy math. I know that my entire sock is going to be nine and a half inches long. And I just figured out that the gusset section of the sock is going to be two and three quarters inches long. So I just need to do some subtraction. I'm gonna start my gusset when it's the sock foot length minus the gusset length. So this minus this. So my whole sock is nine and a half inches long. This gusset shaping is two and three quarters inches long. So I'm going to begin the gusset shaping when my sock is six and three quarters inches long from the tip of the toe. Once you've figured how far you need to knit the foot before you begin this gusset shaping, it's time to actually start knitting this gusset section. And remember, 
this section of the sock is still knit in the round. So I have my sample sock here that I've been working on and I have already worked across the stitches, the instep stitches that are across the top of the foot in my stitch pattern. And now it's time to work my first increase round on the bottom of the foot. And generally the stitches on the bottom of the foot are worked in stockinette stitch. And again, we're going to increase one stitch on each side of this heel section every other round. And generally the increases are made one st stitch away from the side of the sock. So I'm going to go ahead and work my first stitch. And then I happen to be using a median increase that slants to the right here to increase my stitch. But there's no reason that you can't use a different type of increase here. That's kind of up to you. And each one will just give you adding a stitch with each kind of increase. It'll just give you a slightly different look. Once I've increased my stitch, now I'm going to go ahead and work across the bottom of the foot to the other side. And then once I get to the other side of the bottom of the foot, again, I'm going to do my increase one stitch away from the side of the sock. And in this case, I'm using a median increase that slants to the left. But you could use a different kind of increase here. Just be consistent and use the same kind all the way throughout your sock. And then I'm going to knit that last stitch that's at the bottom of the foot. And from this point, you would go ahead and you would work all of your instep stitches in your pattern. And then in the next round, there wouldn't be any increases. You would just go ahead and knit across. So you would alternate an increase round with a round that's worked even with no increases until you've doubled the number of stitches that are here across the bottom of the foot minus two stitches. And you want to make sure also that you're ending after an increase round. Once you've finished knitting the gusset of the sock and done all of the increasing you need to at each side, it's time to set up for the turn heel. And there's a little setup here because the turn heel is going to begin at the center of the sock on the bottom of the foot. What that means is you're likely going to have to work across your instep stitches in pattern and then work halfway across the stitches at the bottom of the foot so that things end here right at the center of the bottom of the foot. Now it's time to turn the heel of our sock. And you may notice that because I am using the magic loop method here, all of my instep stitches right now are held on the cord of my knitting needles, which actually works really nicely because as I'm turning the heel of the sock, I'm going to be working back and forth in short rows just across these heel stitches at the bottom of the sock. I am not going to be doing anything with the instep stitches at this point, so it's nice to have them held and out of the way. You may also notice I joined in a new yarn here in a different color because I am working my turn heel in a contrasting color. And again, that was just my choice. You could continue on and work your heel in the same color. For a true flegal heel, the shaping of the turn heel would start two stitches away from the center of the bottom of the foot on each side. However, I am doing a, a little bit of a variation here with my gusset heel, so I am going to start the shaping at the very center of the sock on the bottom of the foot. So to get things started, first I'm going to do a decrease and you can either do a slip knit pass or a slip slip knit. It's your choice. Just make sure to continue doing the same thing throughout. I personally prefer to do the slip knit pass just because it's a little bit of a tighter decrease for me. 
And then I'm going to knit one stitch and you'll notice I didn't go all the way across all of the heel stitches. I stopped right after that one stitch and then I'm going to turn my work to the other side. Now I'm going to, on the wrong side, slip the first stitch purl wise so I don't twist it. I'm going to purl until I get to the center of the sock. If you were doing a true flegal heel, you would purl to two stitches past the center of the sock. Purl two stitches together. Purl one. And then turn your sock over. And again, you'll notice we didn't go all the way across the needle. We're just working in short rows to turn the heel. Before I knit this next row, you'll notice that there is a fairly noticeable gap right here in between my four turn heel stitches and the stitches that I worked before when I was shaping the gusset of the sock. I like to use this gap as a landmark in my knitting so that I don't have to count as I am turning my heel. So for every right side row, you slip the first stitch purlwise without twisting it, knit to one stitch before that gap, and then to close up that gap, again, you're either going to do a slip knit pass over or a slip slip knit, whichever you choose. Just make sure to do the same thing throughout your knitting. and then knit one stitch. Oop, and I split my yarn there. And then turn things over. And again, on the purl side, you'll notice that again, I get a noticeable gap right here in between my turn heel stitches at the center and these stitches that are were worked before in the gusset shaping. So again, I'm going to use that as a landmark in my knitting. So I'm going to slip the first stitch and then purl across to one stitch before the gap. There's my gap. To close things up, I'm just going to purl two together. And then purl one. And then turn your work over to the other side. So for every right side row of the turn heel, every right side row is going to be the same. You slip the first stitch, knit across to one stitch before the gap, close the gap either with your slip knit pass or a slip knit, slip knit whichever you're using, and then knit one stitch on the wrong side. You're always going to slip the first stitch, purl across to one stitch before the gap, close the gap by doing a purl two together, and then purl one stitch. And you continue in that manner until you have two more stitches left across the bottom of the foot for the turn heel than you originally had at the beginning of your gusset shaping. So for my sock here, I had 32 stitches originally for my gusset shaping. So I'm going to do the turn heel until I have 34 stitches left after the turn heel is done. When you have two more stitches here across the back of the leg, then you do held here across the instep, it's time to start working the sock leg in rounds. And another way to tell that it's time is that you have two stitches left on your right needle that belong to the gusset shaping. And then these two stitches at the end of the left needle also belong to the gusset shaping. We need to remember that we're going to still decrease one stitch 
at each side of the sock so we can close those final gaps as we begin working in rounds. To get started, the first half of the round is going to be very similar, in fact, exactly the same as our right side rows of the turn heel, which just means that we're going to slip that first stitch purlwise without twisting it. We're going to knit across to one stitch before the gap. Then we're going to close our gap with either a slip knit pass or a slip slip knit. And then knit one stitch. Now, instead of turning our work to go back across the turn heel, instead, we're going to continue on working in rounds. So I'm going to rotate my work. And then I need to change my yarn color because my heel is contrasting. So I need to change back to my original yarn color and then work across the instep stitches in pattern. After my instep stitches are complete, I can rotate my work and shift my needles. And then we're going to have one more gap to close here at the back of the foot. So here's the gap in between our gusset stitches and the turn heel stitches. So to close that up and keep working in rounds, I'm going to knit the first stitch. And then to close the gap, I'm just going to knit those two stitches together. And then I can continue on across the back of the heel and just knit across or work in pattern. And from this point, I'll just continue working in rounds around the leg of my sock. I hope you enjoyed learning how to knit a gusset or flegal heel for toe up socks. And if you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you're ready to try this heel in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and look for my free climber socks. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!